what Africa gives to the world, Europe don't have it, America don't have it, Asia don't have it. As a first lady, I am not part of a government system. So when I speak, I speak on behalf of the people because I understand what the people are going through. At the end of the day, I'm not being paid salary and I cannot be fired either. We cannot wait for other people to come and develop us. Every mining company that is in Sierra Leone today is owned by a foreigner. You cannot be coming to our country and take everything that will make us develop and then you still treat us as inferior people, as if we don't know what we're doing. The sense about us celebrating independence, I don't know why we celebrate independence, because we are not free. One of the most fundamental corruptions of the social contract in human history is colonialism. Yeah. And it's that mechanism that some states have used to extract resources from other places, such as Sierra Leone. That deprives countries of the resources they need for government services, for education, for health. So I was hoping you could reflect a little bit on what those forces have done to Sierra Leone and what kind of accountability we might be able to think about just to imagine a way forward from where we've begun now. When you, you look at what Sierra Leone have to offer, when you come to our mineral resources, the kind of mineral resources we have in our country is enough to take care of everybody in that country. We should not have a single per person in Sierra Leone. But unfortunately, we are not given the free will to make decisions on our own mineral resources. There's always Big Brother who decides. And when you fight and say, no, we are not going to do this, they use the system to stop you. It's either they set you up with the opposition and they will be supporting the opposition against you from the back or they cause unnecessary chaos in your country so that you are not able to even govern your own people. They will do things to make you not to uh, be functionable and of course any country that don't have peace cannot develop. You have to have peace before you talk about development. I'll give you a simple example about Sierra Leone. Every mining company that is in Sierra Leone today is owned by a foreigner. Every mining company. If it's not the Chinese, it's the American, it's the British. Our electricity, Bumuna, is run by the British. And we still don't have light. We're looking for light, electricity. If you don't have electricity, how can you talk about education? How can you talk about health facility? How can you talk about improving the infrastructure of your country? We don't have electricity. Now, do we actually even have proper water, pipe bone water, so that our kids will not be sick? We don't have those facilities. Why, with all the minerals we have, there is a cap you put before my husband became the president of Sierra Leone, Sierra Leone was benefiting, they said, uh, what's the word, 0.000.1%. What is that? Basically, a company can take as much as $100 million out of the country in terms of minerals, and then they can just give the country $10,000. Now, what will $10,000 do for our health system? What is $10,000 do for our educational system? And these are the things I believe that are stopping Africa from progressing. We don't have a say. The sense about us celebrating independence, I don't know why we celebrate independence, because we are not free. That is my own take. I'm not speaking also on behalf of the government of Sierra Leone. Nor am I speaking on behalf of His Excellency the President. I am speaking as Fatima, as a citizen of a country who believes that things need to change. Where do we go from here? Do you have any practical ideas about where we might start? <laughs> or collective ideas that we might gain support for? I feel Africa, we, patriotism is very important. You have to love your country to want your country to be a better place. Patriotism. I think we need to be, we have to have that sense of patriotism in our countries and um, our leaders also should be subjected to that. 
you know, it is not only when uh, you were talking about election and then everybody come out and celebrate and after election, that's it. Accountability. Who accounts for what is happening? Who is the one who is changing the narrative of what is happening? Like I said, as a first lady, I am not part of a government system. I am a wife of a president. So when I speak, I speak on behalf of the people because I understand what the people are going through. At the end of the day, I'm not being paid salary, so and I cannot be fired either. <laughs> so that's the, the, the advantage. That's the advantage of being a first lady. But I believe that for Africa, what is happening in Africa today, it need to change, and it need to change now. There is no time like now, because for Sierra Leone, we now have a president who believe that we cannot wait for other people to come and develop us. We cannot wait for another country to come and prescribe how our country should be run or what we need in our country. You know, this divide and rule, if you're close to China, we will not come to your country. If you're close to America, we will not come to your country. I mean, the fight that is between England, Europe, America, China, Russia is not a Sierra Leone fight. That's not our problem. We're fighting for our daily bread. We're looking to have education, just like America. We're looking to have good health facility, just like Europe. We're looking to have governance structure where a, one single person cannot be the dictator of a nation. That's what we're looking for. And in that process, we are going to be allies to everybody who wants us to grow. But if we now align ourselves with someone, and then this other person now is feel offended that, oh, you know, I'm, I'm coming from China now. I flew in, I mean, I've gone around the world to get to Boston, you know. I went to China and then come here. I, before here, I went to England and then flew into America. For me, I am not restricted where I should go or who I should be talking to. I am going around the world to see a country that sees Africa not as uh, uh, an, not just as an ally of what you'll be getting from us, but a country that sees Sierra Leone as partners and treat us with respect. You cannot be coming to our country and take everything that will make us develop and then you still treat us as inferior people, as if we don't know what we're doing. I think that is wrong, you know. We're looking for partners that value us. People that will come to our country and say, you know what, this country has suffered enough, they need to grow. We were once the atom of Africa. Every country within Sub-Sahara Africa used to come to Sierra Leone for our education. And today, what can we be proud of? We cannot talk about education in Sierra Leone because they've ruined that for us. Everything that has empowered Sierra Leone has been ruined. And now we have a leader who wants to fix everything. There is a problem. In Africa, you should not have a leader that is assertive, a leader that knows what his people want, a leader that wants to change the, what is happening. The moment you have that, it's everyone's target. And then they find reason to slow you down, they find reason to stop you, and they use that system of corruption. They use corrupt people, they use negative people, they use unpatriotic citizens to come after a government who is doing what is right for a system. I think we need to address those issues. Unfortunately, I don't know who I, who, I mean, um, I'm very good at name calling, but at the moment, I don't know who I should be screaming at. I think. The way you started on working on reform for women and girls is a template that can be followed for many other issues. Do you think of what a next one might be? What they, I mean, one of the most serious issue I have with the United Nations is the fact that um, Africa, Africa is not part of the Security Council. Hmm. <laughs> We're talking about 52 countries, 54 countries, I'm sorry. 54 countries, a whole continent does not have one person representing Africa when it comes to decision making at the Security Council. And I'd observe also that no African country has its own executive director at the World Bank either. No, 
Unfortunately, yes. we don't know how to manage money. <laughs> I, I think I'll have to disagree with you. And what, what, think, what, you know, what do you want me to say? Because think, if that is the perception <laughs> since the beginning of, you know, every time an African come forward for something that they have to be a decision maker for the world, not just Africa, mm. it's just not possible. I understand. So what can I say? There must well, be a prescription somewhere that says, <laughs> Africa, you are not good enough. Well, it might be revolutionary, but I'm going to say it right here. Africans should be in charge of Africa. I believe that also that Africans' issue can only be enhanced when Africans decide to do that. They should not allow another person to give them a prescription of how Africa should look like or what we need in our Africa because we know what we need in our Africa. No one will know that better than us. And I think the, the UN should see Africa as partners. And the United Nations, definitely, you cannot have seven countries vetoing everything. When it comes to Africa issue, it is those seven countries. Who are the countries that are actually exploiting Africa? They are the ones who have the veto power to make decision on anything that has to do with Africa. So for me, I think that is wrong. And that is one thing the president of Sierra Leone has campaigned for. And this year, Sierra Leone is now a non-permanent member at the United Nations. But yet still, we don't have a veto power. But we're there. At least we are, we are getting closer. And in these two years, our mission is to get the United Nations to see Africa not as one country, because that's the mistake they do. When you say I'm from Africa, they say, oh, you're from Nigeria. I said, no, Nigeria is one country in Africa. <laughs> you know, we have 54 countries in Africa. So see us as a continent that also we, we, what we offer to the world, Europe does not have it. What Africa gives to the world, Europe don't have it, America don't have it, Asia don't have it. Because we are not mining in China, we are not doing any mining in America or mining in Europe. But they are doing it in every part of Africa. Not just Sierra Leone, go to Democratic Republic of Congo, go to the Botswana, go to Angola, go everywhere there is mineral resources. It is the West and the Chinese who are there. Now, that sums it up for this video. What do you guys think? Share thoughts and opinions in the comment section below. Let's have a proper discussion about this without having me impose my opinions and ideas on this matter. Give this video a thumbs up if you liked it so that the YouTube algorithm can know that this video was so much interesting and share it far wide to more avid viewers just like you. Subscribe and click the notification bell if this is your first time watching these videos and so that you can be notified as soon as we make a new upload on videos just like this. My name is Louis. Until next time, peace out.